Hi. Um, this is The Facts. Uh, this episode of The Facts is called The Importance of Reality. It, I think it's part one. I'm not sure part two isn't written yet, but I think there's going to be a part two at least. My name is Lenore von Stein. This is Bern Nix, uh, Beth Griffith, and Andrew Bolotowski. They're here with me. And um, I used to daydream all the time. Um, I, and I, I, I wanted to stop. Uh, I, and, but it took me decades to stop. And, and I, I've been thinking about this. When I think about the importance of reality, I think I have to move the daydreams out of the way to get more reality. And uh, for the most part, I've moved, well, I've moved a lot of them out of the way. And, and so I was thinking about what were these daydreams about? Why was I dra daydreaming? And I think that, at least from my perspective, and of course that is the perspective, I was, I was forgiving people. And uh, I was... I was trying to make sense of things that didn't make sense to me. <laughs> Goes without saying. As I said, I've, I've been in this in this fight since I was a child for access to my mind, and uh, I think I'm pretty close now. It took a long time, and um, there were just these. I, but what I realized, you know, you open a door and you see another one, you see another one, you see another one, and what I realized unhappily, but happily maybe for the end of the story, is that there are these tenacious neurotic things that are, you know, entwined into my being that are part of this whole problem. And once I get rid of them, you know, I'm out of here. It's not 
so bad, it's not so good, it's not so bad, it's not so good. Daydreams, you know, which kind of they they kind of keep you in place. They kind of you know they kind of pickle you in position. But but on the plus side, that pickling that that keeps you that keeps you that keeps you that helps you preserve yourself to fight another day. I think I think that's part of what's going on. I heard this story uh, about a woman who's whose in-laws locked her into uh, the room every day when her husband left her and her baby without a bathroom. They locked her in the room, they pushed this armoire in front of the door, and they locked her in this room uh, every day. And um, I know someone, uh, someone that I talk to regularly who argues that reality isn't so great and that military hunters aren't so bad. Um, I, he has a very dry sense of humor, I think. I, I don't know what he means. When, I, when I'm sort of happy, even when I'm, you know, well-focused, I don't fantasize. Uh, Wikipedia, 
uh, said that realism in the visual arts and in literature refers to the general attempt to depict subjects in accordance with secular empirical rules, religious factual rules, uh, and that the French realists, this is around 1850, positioned themselves against Romanticism. Um, and the realists believed in, they believed in, 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 the, in the ideal of objective reality as opposed to the, what they thought was the exaggerated romanticism of the romantic era that they had just come out of. You know, like in the 60s, they would say, you know you got it if it makes you feel good. <laughs> if it makes you feel good. I, I mean, I don't know, I even put labels, but and I, I think that the truth, what I mean by that is that I think that the truth is going to set me free, and I think it's found in reality, whatever that is, and, and that... Um, Nobody said that before? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. No. Uh, and <laughs> all of my daydreams, whether they're my standard daydreams or, uh, you know, the new guys on the block, they're all, uh, they're all, they all have sim similar subject matter, they all have a similar form, um, and, and, th and they all, you know, sort of go away like the taste of food, and, and um, I don't seem to be able to make them totally f out of my imagination. They're all based on and, and experiences, things I've seen or, or want to see, and, and my imagination won't stretch, but so far. Uh, and if I try to stretch it a little further, it seems phony. Um, and, and I think that that's a clue to what daydreams, to the purpose of daydreams. You 
better not cry. You're going to find out. I'm telling you why. Entered uh, when I when I when I got to, I I I'm I love Stanislavski I love method acting that's why I became an that's became an artist this idea that you could find that you could that you could set yourself free that you could learn from yourself who you are and uh, and and that's why I do this stuff I I want to I want to I want to I want to understand you know more about this this contraption and and that's. And I, I, th I think that we've just gone through this long 50, 60 year period as we embrace this. You know, Stanislavski is naturalism. One of the people said it's the naturalist. And we embrace this naturalism. And it's, now it's just become a sort of a style. A style without, you know, a style is already a thing empty of content. It's just something you see from very far away. And that's why you just call it by the stylistic name because you don't really know what it is. And, um, or you, maybe you know, but you, whatever. But it, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's inconsequential. Anything's inconsequential that way. And oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, I learned to improvise music, and I learned this improvising acting too. I learned to leave the melody for short periods of time, the melody and the harmonic constraints, and then you, you, you well, staying with the harmonic constraints, and then eventually just leave the melody and the harmonic constraints, you know, in, in the dust, and you can stay away for a very long time. And, and um, 
the problem with improvisation, it has many pluses, but the problem with it is that you can you can be turning around in your own in your own areas, your own safe areas. That's, you hear that all the time in in the halls of music schools. <laughs> um, um, you may not actually be extending as much as you think. It, it, it may be an illusion and, and having more to do with ferocity and nerves than, um, than going somewhere new. Noam Chomsky, um, Noam Chomsky, the great um, linguist as well, you know, important linguist as well as a great activist, say that daily conversation between ordinary people uh, uses language uniquely. I was very surprised. Oh, he's 
Oui. 